And today I wanted to talk to you about my friend Lenny DiCarlo, an older, incorrigible bank robber that I met when I was a cop reporter in El Paso, Texas. The year was 2000, and Lenny had just been arrested. So I went to interview him in jail for the newspaper, and uh, I thought, oh my god, I'm talking to a bank robber, I'm going to win a Pulitzer Prize. <laughs> and meanwhile, Lenny wanted someone to write a book about him, so this was a pretty good match. Um, Lenny had robbed like a dozen banks, but not like in the movies, no. In real life, you just stand in line, you know, produce a note that says you have a gun, and they give you the money. Easy peasy. But Lenny also had a few cool tricks up his sleeves to avoid capture. Uh, one of them was the shirt trick. So that's when he robbed a bank wearing a black shirt, then he took it off, and he had a white shirt underneath, and then he just goes have a, you know, has a sandwich, watches the cops sc scramble around looking for a guy in a black shirt. And uh, so this black shirt, white shirt thing is kind of Lenny in a nutshell, right? The, the junkie with the dyed, hair, dyed black hair uh, from the, the, post, the wanted poster and the white haired gentleman that I met in jail, the aspirational Lenny. Uh, just all around good company, funny, highly quotable. This is what he said about his lifelong addiction to heroin, like a torrid love affair with Gina Lolo Brigida. Uh, so Lenny was a ne'er-do-well from early on, and he ended up robbing banks, which landed him in prison. And the last time he was out on parole, he was a law-abiding citizen for exactly three days, did heroin, and went uh, right back to robbing banks. And this time, he chose Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, as the locale, because in his mind, it was romantic. And it was romantic, like in the 50s or 60s, but now it was overrun by drug cartels. Uh, but in many ways, it was also the perfect place to be a bank robber because he would rob banks in El Paso, take the, the bridge over the Rio Grande, and uh, hide in Juarez. And back and forth, back and forth, in safety and lawlessness in Juarez. He lived in the uh, red light district, and uh, he did heroin, and he met friends with prostitutes and drug dealers, and he liked to, to buy everybody stuff. So the money never lasted very long and he had to go right back to robbing banks. And later, the testimonies of his victims uh, showed that they had been pretty terrified to have been robbed, uh, except for this one teller, a woman, who uh, just did not believe that he had a gun. And that was a very frustrating episode for, for Lenny, as you might imagine. Meanwhile, in Juarez, everybody knew what he was up to because the surveillance photos were all over the news, but they didn't care because um, he kept paying, buying off everybody. There were even three uh, neighborhood cops who uh, greeted him every day with, hola, bank robber. <laughs> um, but that all stopped when the FBI put a price on his head, and even though the reward was only $5,000, that's two years' worth of wages in Juarez, so somebody gave him up, and he was sentenced to life. Uh, he was transferred out of El Paso, and I never saw him again, but for the next 10 years, we became pe pen pals. Uh, so I had a P.O. box everywhere that I moved to receive his mail, and uh, I sent him a $20 money order for his birthday and one for uh, Christmas. And one year, he bought yarn with that money and made me, and crocheted me, a hat and scarf. But wait, before you think that this is some kind of prison romance, let me set you straight. It was just me sending him some Louis L'Amour Western novels that he liked and him making boring small talk about his health. So it was basically like having a grandpa in prison. <laughs> so the book and the Pulitzer Prize never materialized because uh, there's some stories that are just too small for journalism. And also because even though I thought that he was interesting as heck, all my friends thought he was a common lowlife. And then earlier this year, I stopped receiving his mail and his money order retur was returned to me. So I went online to the inmate finder and I found that he had passed away. And so like a good reporter, I FOIA'd his death certificate and found that he had suffered a heart attack in prison and died in the hospital. I also learned that his, mother, his father and mother were named Earl and Pearl, which is adorable. So Lenny, I'm sorry I never wrote a book about you, but I did an exact talk about you. <laughs> and the lesson is sometimes as a journalist, you think you have a story, but all you have is an aging bank robber as a friend. <laughs> Rest in peace, Lenny. <laughs>